So usually I like to jump up and then jump back down to the previous platform, punch him, and then continue the process. After a few hits, you'll be able to jump over him if you like, in which case, usually I just bypass the second one altogether by taking a hit or trying to jump over him. They take way too many hits, and sometimes you'll end up losing a lot more health just trying to fight him because of that. Also, thankfully, though, right afterwards, there's the ability to replenish your health at one of the health stages. In the next area, we have to deal with a lot of fans that are trying to blow you towards the spike wall behind them. So, just continue moving forward towards them when you get close, deliver a punch. If you have any of the android robots to help you out, they can help you out in terms of doing some damage. But just keep pushing forward and try to keep punching when you get the opportunity. Thankfully, they only take a few hits, but you have to be very careful not to hit the spikes behind you. The next area of the stage has to do with a lot of underwater areas, so our gravity in water is obviously going to be a lot different. First off, head to the left here, take out this robot before going into this area to find one of the power-up stations. While you're moving through the stage, be careful of the mines that are flowing through the water. Unfortunately, you're not going to be able to hurt them. If they run into you, they do explode and do damage. So usually, for the most part, if you have a robot guy with you, he's going to be the one who takes the damage. Now up there, you can see you can spend 2,000 gold if you want to, and what that does is it gives you an extra life. For this guy, jump up from the bottom platform and continue delivering hits to him every time he releases missiles. If you have a robot guy, he can help you out here, or you have to be very close with your fist to hit him, but you may want to take him out before going up to the platform. Especially if you don't want to try to lose your power-up that we got earlier on. Here we have one last robot, take him out before moving to his platform, jump up a couple more times and get out of the water, and there's the telepad in order to take us into the boss room. This boss can be a little bit of a pain because you are underwater while you fight him. If you have a robot companion, use his ability to your advantage for the most part of this battle. If not, you're going to have to jump in close to him in order to deliver hits to him. Sometimes when you actually get a direct punch on them, you'll see that you'll actually bounce him backwards towards the far wall, and he'll then continue to move forward. You can sometimes get him stuck in a little bit of a loop that you can keep knocking him back a bunch of times, deliver a lot of hits to him. As far as his main things go though, when he shoots up, you'll be able to either jump over him or avoid him altogether when he shoots up to the top of the water. And when he's moving back and forth, his shots rain down on you, you should be able to stand in between the shots, and with the mines that he drops, you should either be able to avoid them all together because there's only three of them, or, just like the shots, stand in between the fire shots in order to avoid them. Once you lose your robot companion, jump up to deliver hits to him when he's in a probable position that you actually can reach him in. Bounce him back and forth, wait for him to avoid his projectiles, and then repeat the process when he goes back to the top of the water. It's a little bit time consuming, but it's relatively easy. Once he's taken care of, we've completed Area D, and now we have only one more area to complete before we can move on to the final stage of the game.
Area E has a lot of different things that we've already seen throughout the game, but it also adds something new that it has an anti-gravity part later on in the stage, where we'll actually have to be walking on the ceiling. At the beginning of the stage, I like to build up my money, because there's a couple enemies you can get from real quick, then move back over and grab the power-up at the beginning. The most annoying part about this area right now is the dropping rocks from the ceiling. They move relatively slowly, but they do move randomly, so you're going to have to be very careful when trying to dodge them. But you may accidentally get called off guard by one or two of them and take some damage from it. You may have noticed, though, with some of the Alpha Beta symbols that some are flashing, and you can actually punch them in order to get the Alpha or Beta symbol that you want. Every time you punch them, it does change, and it's something that can really help you in terms of getting that ultimate power-up. Before we move on to the second part of the stage, you can see there's a nice bag of gold and a health station in case you need to replenish your health. Here's one of those annoying guys, so I'm just gonna jump right over and continue on. No point in even fighting them. In this area of the stage, we're gonna have to use the fences to climb up and try to avoid the enemies the best that we can. My robot guy here will help me out a little bit since his shots right now rain up and down the walls. They cling onto the walls and then move along that path so you can take out certain enemies with them. There is a total of eight different robots, so you may find one that you actually like the best. There's eight variations that are in the game because there's eight different combinations that you can get with the symbols. So experiment with the one that you like the best. You may find one that's very useful in terms of being able to defeat most of the enemies. As far as the climbing goes, we should be pretty used to it by now in the game, so just defeat any enemies that are on the area before you jump onto that area. And here's where the fun begins, the anti-gravity part where we have to walk on the ceiling here. It'll take a few seconds to get used to this, but nothing really else changes other than being now walking on the ceiling. When you continue on, you'll get switched back to now walking on the ground. We'll have another one of the anti-gravity areas coming up in just a few seconds. These big enemies can be annoying. Just wait for them to come towards you and get to a good area so you actually can deliver some hits to them to destroy them. Once in here, we flip back around, so now we have to get used to a little bit of the jumping now, and avoiding the enemies and the fire that are on the ceiling, as well as on the ground. At the bottom here, we have our last of the anti-gravity areas, but it actually switches. You'll be on the top for a little bit, and then you actually can switch to the bottom every time you jump. So you have to be careful when making your way through this area, so you don't accidentally jump into the fire pits. Try your best to avoid any of the shots coming at you, and as far as the big things go, like I said before, wait for them to come towards you in a good area, so you can deliver some quick hits to them to destroy them. Once we get to the end of the area, we have another one of the power-up stations. You can buy an extra life if you like, defeat one or two more enemies, and then jump into the telepad to get to the boss room. The boss of this level is relatively difficult to deal with. He flies around, it's kind of like a ghost enemy, and anytime he throws the ball up into the air to hit the ceiling or ground, what happens is it flips the gravity so you'll be on the top or bottom. You have to be very careful of this when the gravity switches so that when you fall off the ceiling, you don't end up in any of the fire pits. When you're on the ground or on the ceiling, jump up and try to do damage to him anytime you can. When he gets into a good area, especially with that power-up ability that we just got before entering here, wait for a good area, then jump up and deliver a quick hit to him. If you get lucky, sometimes you will fly to the ceiling or to the ground really low, and you'll be able to get a lot of quick hits on him relatively fast. 
He does have an energy move where he'll get all these balls to circle around him and then shoot them out in the spread area all around, which can be a little bit harder to dodge. But sometimes if you get lucky, you'll be able to get him stuck in an area, and you'll be able to just keep hitting him, and he won't actually be able to do that move. After you hit him enough times, you'll defeat him, and we've completed Area E. It's now time to move on to the final level of the game. 